with only two votes separating matte paintings from last week's topic, we're going to look at the art of establishing shot landscapes. Don't forget to go vote for future topics most Tuesdays through Mondays. Sometimes you need a background, and sometimes you need an establishing shot of an alien landscape. This is where matte paintings used to play a big role in Star Trek before CGI became good enough looking and cost economical. Sometimes painted on big canvas, and sometimes painted on glass and backlit. These bits of art adorned Trek from the first episodes of TOS till the sixth season of Voyager. And as usual, we're going to start the discussion at fifth worst. 30 Minute Monastery our first outing to the home of Klingon Time Crystals and the prophesized point of return for Kaelas, Boreth, gives the impression that this matte painting was rushed and painted by someone following a half-hour Bob Ross video. Being that this is the latter seasons of TNG, there's no excuse for how unrealistic it is. Number 4. Too Big to Hide one of many things that just don't work in the motion picture, and actually looks worse as things like 4K director's cuts keep showing it in higher def, is the matte painting of the Golden Gate Bridge set against the foreground of a hangar in Starfleet Headquarters. It's really obvious, and the general compositing of multiple pieces takes you right out of this already snooze-fest of a movie. The clouds are the worst part, and it really doesn't work against such a big, living, breathing foreground. Number 3. Pilot Paintings The Caretaker just kind of takes the prize for worst collection of matte paintings in the franchise. After the opening credits, the first thing we see is a half-assed matte painting of New Zealand that has never looked right to me. While the Ocampa Underground is actually okay as far as Trek matte paintings go, the Kazon Settlement painting in the desert is another terribly out-of-place set piece. This is what you get when you spend more in the budget for Kate Mulgrew's hair than for special effects in a pilot episode. Number 2. Improper Scale I swear, Devil in the Dark is one of the worst executions of one of the best premises in Trek. There's a moral message and non-carbon-based life that comes off as really hokey, including the matte painting used as an establishing shot of this mining colony. I wish there was a person set against this painting for sense of scale. The multiple hot water heater towers all appear to be the same height, but shifted slightly up and down from each other, and imply this sense of impossible physics that my brain doesn't like wrapping itself around. And the worst matte painting in Trek history stored too long. This is what you get trying to reuse a nearly 50-year-old matte painting, but it's been stored so long you can see the marks from where it was folded up for decades. TNG tried to pass this faded thing off as a real cave scene in The Vengeance Factor, and even back when I watched this in a staticky, over-the-air broadcast, I remember thinking how fake it looked. Say what you will about CGI, but I don't know that I've ever seen computer sets look worse than this. Adding some happy little starships over in the best of matte paintings. Number 5. Only thing going for it. I never thought I'd say this, but in the top five, Code of Honor. After kidnapping Tasha Yar, the establishing shot of a temple on the planet Legon 2 is actually really decent, especially considering that this is the third episode of an 80s series. People and real set pieces set inside the temple entrance area really sell this. If you look at the cityscape and mountains in the distance, it becomes pretty obvious it's a painting. But drawing your gaze into the temple is one of the single things that works in this bottom-of-the-barrel overall episode. Number 4. City of the Devil Ventax 2 is shown to us on one of its worst days in a thousand years. But its landscape painting with imposed scared population is a fabulous way to establish both the beauty and hysterical situation, as the people think Man Bear Pig has come back to collect on its thousand-year-old contract. Interesting pyramid architecture that speaks to these people's philosophy of simple agrarian, yet scientifically driven, warp-capable society. Given that it's just paint on glass, this scene feels lived in. Number 3. What's Inside? When the Enterprise D is accidentally pulled inside a Dyson Sphere, there's not only a beautifully laid out curved matte painting showing artificial waterways and sweeping halo-like landscapes, but an overall well-composited shot with clouds, Enterprise, and tractor beams that are quite seamless. 
This is definitely one of the most ambitious paintings in Trek history. Number two, Klingon architecture. There's something ominously perfect about our first look at the first city of Kronos. The Great Hall and familial Klingon houses are well represented in our first look at the homeworld of this warrior race. It's dark and foreboding, yet functional as a city. This feels like the most distinctly Star Trek matte painting that could never be used for another production. The best matte painting in Trek, number one. Final Evolution. Voyager's sixth season, Blink of an Eye, brings the end of an era, as the last use of a matte painting to date in the franchise. To punch up the final use of this dying art form, this painting depicts the societal advancements of an out-of-phase-with-the-rest-of-the-galaxy race over what would be thousands of years. The painting changes and gets added to through the run as this race goes from Stone Age to space faring. It's fitting that this beautiful evolving matte painting closed out a more than 30-year run of these oversized art pieces. What's your favorite matte painting in Trek?